as Cecilia comes to the front, Jesus knew that his time on this earth was short. So he gathered all of his disciples together because he wanted to give them some final teachings. In a sense, it was their graduation ceremony from Christ's seminary, and Christ was the keynote speaker. This was his commencement address. Jesus summarized everything that he had taught them. He told them that they must not forget these things, reminded them of the essential truths they must remember. He warned them of the trials that were coming. He encouraged them to stay strong in faith. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Cecilia. You know, I read a story not too long ago of a helicopter pilot by the name of Mike. And Mike was on leave from the Navy. And while they were at dinner, he was telling his father all about the helicopters that he flew often in very dangerous conditions and many times far out over the sea. He concluded in his conversation by saying that the life, that his life and the life of the crew depended on one boat. That one boat is what held that huge whirling rotor in place. The mechanics had finally termed that boat as being the Jesus boat. And without that Jesus boat, they would be doomed. Their safe return home depended entirely on that one boat. In this very modern parable that Cecilia read to us this morning, it's telling us from John's Gospel when he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit. Far apart from me, you can do nothing. You don't have to know too much about gardening and plants to realize that a tree or a shrub or any kind of plant as far as that goes, depends on the trunk, depends on the root system for it to be healthy and happy. To use this imagery, if you will, of Jesus' boat, you might say that the trunk of the vine is Jesus' trunk because without it, the vine is dead. A man once planted a bunch of cucumbers in his backyard and he made sure the ground was well prepared he bought the very best cucumber seeds and seedlings that he could find, and he set to work. He set out to work with the skill of someone who had planted cucumbers before. To his delight, as the rain came soon, he had cucumber vines spread all over the backyard. The plants were green, they were healthy, they were beautiful. And one day, though, he noticed that some of the leaves didn't look as green as some of the others. Not many days later, he was noticing his cucumber vines and some of the leaves were as good as dead. He followed those vines with the dead leaves back until he got to the main plant. And when he got there, he discovered that the base of that main plant, he had been eaten by some kind of grub or some kind of worm and almost eaten through the stem. The cucumber plant was dependent on the mainstream for water, for nourishment. Living juices flowed 
from the main stem of that cucumber plant and enables the high quality delicious fruit to eventually appear. It's not possible to produce fruit that the man had cultivated the ground. He had cultivated it carefully. He had watered it daily. The cucumber vines were unable to receive that goodness, so they withered and they died. In similar ways as Christians, we need our true vine. Our true vine is Jesus Christ. When Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, he's talking about the very special relationship that exists between him and you and us. We're dependent on him for everything that we need in our daily life. We're dependent on him for food, for health, for family, good friends to love, forgiveness, hope, comfort, and for eternal life. Apart from him, we would be like that cucumber vine with its wilting leaves. Without being joined to the main stem and roots, we would certainly die. As Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. We were joined to Jesus on the day of our baptism. You might say that when the water of baptism was poured over us, we were grafted into the vine, that vine being Jesus. We were intimately connected to him. We were connected to his death and to his resurrection, and we received from him all that we need to sustain our lives. We're connected to him when we come here to worship. And when we hear his word, we stay connected to him. It doesn't matter how much we think we know about the Bible or how many times we've read it, but we need to continue to read it because it gives us life-giving nourishment. It nourishes our, our soul. That's what God's Word, God's Word offers to each of us. And as we read it, as we study it, God's Word offers us strength in the face of new situations that occur to us daily in life. We're joined to Jesus when we receive His body and blood. When we receive Him in holy sacraments, in holy communion, we're refreshed and we're freed from the guilt, guilt of sin. Our faith is strengthened. Our faith is strengthened when, when we are nourished through God's Word, nourished through the sacrament of communion. The Holy Spirit works through those and enables our life in Christ to be able to grow, to be able to make it stronger and to keep us close to God, especially when the chips are down for us. Our faith, our faith, if we don't eat and drink every day, we become sick and maybe even die. Likewise, as branches of the true vine, Jesus, we're kept healthy and alive because we are connected to the source of life. The translators of the New Testament, they use various words to describe this connection. Whether we're talking about abiding whether we're talking about remaining or being joined, one thing is extremely clear to me is being connected to Christ is crucial. It's the only way that we can have a complete life. When we plant a cucumber patch, we expect to have a crop of cucumbers. Or when we plant tomato plants, we expect to have a crop of tomato plants. From the grapevine, we expect a crop of juicy grapes. <coughs> And so it is with Jesus. Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. And from the branches, Jesus says he expects us to be able to bear fruit and a lot of it. To be joined to Christ. To be a branch that is grafted into the vine. Jesus means to bear fruit. The kind of fruit that should be evident in our lives. The fruits of love. The fruits of joy. The fruits of peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. The fruit that we bear shows itself 
in very practical ways. If you join to Christ, you cannot look the other way when someone is in need. When you join to Christ, you don't cross the street to avoid a person which, with whom you've had a disagreement. As a branch atta attached to Christ, we don't hold back our forgiveness. We try to be understanding and helpful. We try to be encouraging instead of being negative and, and critical of people. Being connected to Jesus means that we will seek reconciliation instead of adding fuel to disharmony. It means showing love. It means showing patience to those whom you don't think even deserve it. In other words, being joined to Christ has very practical implications for the way we live our lives every day. The nice picture of the vine, the branches, and the fruit is not just some theoretical thing. It isn't just a matter of having this nice, warm feeling about being close to closely connected to Jesus. It's about something we need our heads to be in agreement in this church. Not to forget about it until the next time we come into this church. Bearing fruit isn't an optional extra when you're connected to the branch of God. To have a good crop of grapes is necessary for the vines to be pruned once in a while. As that vine grower cuts off all those long branches, leaving only the main trunk and a couple of thicker branches tied to the stringer, pruning is essential. It's essential for a good harvest. It isn't too long before the vine looks lovely and those leafy grapes, bunches of grapes begin to appear and we see it hanging as new growth. Jesus is telling us in that statement, that all the useless foliage that we have in our lives needs to be cut away. We may think this foliage makes us look attractive, especially to the world, but it will not in any way help us to bear good fruit that will bring glory to God. In business, there's greed, there's selfishness, disrespect, especially for the feelings of people or for their needs who might be in the way of them getting ahead, those things have to be pruned away to allow that fruit of generosity, to allow that fruit of kindness and humility to be able to grow. It might be acceptable to others to indulge in sex outside of marriage, to run down people behind their backs, or to participate in some harmful act that endangers our health and leads others astray. But these things must be pruned away if we are to show fruit of caring, of understanding, and of self-control. might think it's okay to be unkind or grumpy or intolerant, but these must be pruned away. If you are to grow fruit of love, peace, and patience, you must prune those away. To bear the fruit that Jesus is looking for means to prune away all the foliage of the, that the, so that the Holy Spirit then can cause real fruit to grow. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, and self-control. Believe me, none of this is easy. Our sinful nature prefers to be selfish and greedy. You've always heard me say it's easier to be bad than to be nice. We find it easier to ignore people than to help them. It's so much easier to be hurtful and critical than to encourage and to comfort someone. We can't do this kind of pruning that we need in our lives by ourselves. We have to have our heavenly gardener to give us the strength and the will to be able to change. We need the Holy Spirit to help us cut out the dead wood of sin and to grow beautiful fruit. That's why it's ever so important that we're connected to that vine. From the vine, Jesus, we receive the nourishment that we need to live as His disciples. We receive the forgiveness 
that we need for our failures. We grow in our understanding of what it means to be a baptized person living in an everyday life. This is the fifth Sunday after Easter. And we're still in Easter season because the vine lives resurrected. So do the branches. The life of Christ flows through us through the Word and through the sacraments. As Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit. He who remains in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit. The fruit of faith. The fruit of good deeds. My prayer for you this morning is may that life-giving sap of Christ's love make us all fruit-bearing branches of the very best fruit that's available. In your bulletin, I have put an insert that I would like for you to read with me. Christ our Lord invites all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. Fail to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law and have rebelled against Your love. We've not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for fitful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made us a new covenant by water and spirit on that night in which he gave himself up to us. He took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. He told him to do this in remembrance of him. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to the disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine Make them be for the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, with all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Blessed by love. To work with love and in love with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your st and strangers who will become friends. Bearing the fruit of the life giving vine as you cultivate, as you cultivate abundant life wherever you go and show love, forgiveness, grace, and humility. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful message this morning. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week. Always remember God loves you.